Live from FedEx Forum in the American Home Shield Studio, this is The Chris Vernon Show on GrindCityMedia.com, presented by Direct Auto and Life Insurance. Now, here's your host, Chris Vernon. Noon on GrindCityMedia.com. It's Chris Vernon Show. And it is a Wednesday. In fact, it is the August 21st, 2019 edition of the show. And it is a Tuesdays with Tony on a Wednesday. Hey, That's my dog. Back like I never left, man. That's my dog. Better late than never. That's my dog. So I texted you the other day and I said, yo, you need to turn on NBA TV. I saw it. I saw it. You did? Yeah, I saw um, I saw the great dif- defensive dis- display of uh, the Grizzlies. Um, some, <laughs> some, some huge wins for the younger group. I didn't know they was going beyond grit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did see that. You did? So he still got some grit in this thing. Uh, and I don't know. It was just fun to see, you know, Zach do his thing, Mike do his thing, young Mike Conley, masked up Mike Conley. I saw all the games. You did. You yeah. you, you flipped it on. And, I, and then I, I actually paid more and more attention to um, Jared. Oh, you watched the – they I, they watched the, they showed the Brooklyn game and yeah, they showed the L.A. game. Yeah, and, and, and I'm mad that I didn't see those games. Oh, you didn't see them I didn't last see year? I, I know those specific games. I watched them, but you know. Right. It You're was not a paying lot of, attention the same way. I ain't paying way. attention to him because he, he probably was giving me maybe 16 and, yep. and 8 and you know, some quiet, solid numbers. Yes. But those specific games, he, he I'm talking about he showed up big, took, Ooh, took tough shots. 30-somethings. And then all I could think about was that time when I asked him, you ready? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, hey. Jerry, he is ready. Hey, he ready. He ready. So just to see that and then I was looking at – you know, uh, the Morant, you know, his highlights, his upcoming, his upcoming. Man. I think it's going to be exciting. fun this year. Yeah, that's no. what I said. It's going to be fun this year. There's more buzz about it this year than there has been in the last couple of years. You know, everybody – that the one season ended with the, the six-game loss uh, to San Antonio, and then they got rid of you and Zach, let you guys move elsewhere, and that was a huge hit. And then they came back, and the beginning of the season was fine – and then Mike got hurt, and that whole season just went to absolute hell. And they tanked out the rest of the way and mm-hmm. lost 60 games of that. And then they ended up with Jaron. And then last year, until the trade deadline, you know, they started off great. Um, and then about December, they botched the trade, the Marshawn Lynch, Wayne Selden deal. And from that point on, the team just, I mean, they lost like 20 out of 21 games. I mean, it was something crazy. And then ended up making the trades at the trade deadline. And then with the, you know, new infusion when it was like all new guys, DeLon Wright and Avery Bradley and Jonas Valanciunas and all those guys, like that was fun towards the end of the year. And they played it out and they won a lot of home games, you know, down the stretch. So that one got a little bit better. But, geez, Louise, I mean, the last two years, um, we're not – you know, people weren't buzzed around, and now, like, because they, they got lucky. They, you got to get lucky. They got the number two pick, and now everybody's excited for, you know, like, you you got these two guys, and it's like, look, you know that you got to have a couple of the best players in the league to have a shot at the title, and there's at least, you know, for the first time, like, man, we might have two of the – it's possible you could end up with two of the best players in, in the NBA, with these two, with Jaron and with Ja. Well, we'll see. You never know, right? Sometimes and, and it plays out differently, but. I just, I, I like, I like, I like the guy's touch, his feel, his upside, his aggressiveness in that specific game. I watched I mean, He's young. Hey, he hey. was young. I would say he he's the youngest 19. player in the league. Like, yo, he got a, he got, he got, he can, it's kind of scary because I want to try to compare him to KG. I just ain't seen a lot of ah, just right. a lot of. I ain't seen that. That's a difference. That, 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 that right, like I mean, well, I extra mean, level. Like I'm. It's I'm, a difference between are you 
KG and you've got like you're a pit bull. Right. Right? Or a quiet assassin. Are you Bosch, who's Bosch, yeah, he's ooh, a good, ooh, good comparison. But he's like a ten time all star. Ten time all star. A Hall of Famer. A Hall of Famer. Uh, he's a champion. Champion. Yep, yep. Right? Like I mean he Man, I that's a good up, comparison. He put up numbers, but I mean like that's a good comparison. I like that Chris. Either way, he's awesome. No, either way, you know either, way either way, like, either way. Either way. Either way you're awesome, but like KG's all time. Awesome. Nah, like, nah, he's in a what, different class. I would, love to, I would love to just. KG's it. the best player on a champion. On a champion, for sure. Bosh and his, is and like his, his, second or third guy. Second, third guy. And intensity wise, I think KG get the edge. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? He's, he's ridiculous. You get the edge. I, I think about it like last spring when he was in here with us. He's still intense. <laughs> explain <laughs> what he explained. He's cool out. You know what I mean? Like, some of these guys, you know, they're like intense on the floor. He's intense all the time. True that. Like he just True that. that's that's how he lives, right? So he um no, but when you, did you see any of the old games from your time? Like oh, they showed yeah. the old Golden State game. They showed the Golden State game. They didn't show me walking in there with the kids. No, <laughs> but they edited that out. But I, I did see um I did see how hard it was just looking back, just those guys moving. Uh, our togetherness on the defensive end. I think game two, uh, pretty much we kind of caught a hold to those guys. That was the broke face game. Yeah, when Mike came back. And I just, I don't know, injury, it, it, you look back, you, you see injury. I think the injury bug kind of hurt us a lot along our way. You know what of I mean? Of course it did. And sometimes you got to be lucky. Sometimes you also got to be healthy along the way. But You guys had, man, them, ra- you had them rattled. Yeah, I, believe so. I believe so. Because everything, they look so different against you than they did against I everybody so. else. Because you were making them play in the 90s. And, my, and you know what it was? And all we were doing was we were switching on the down screens, any guards. Mm-hmm. And so any guards come together, we switch. You know what I mean? Right. And me personally, I kind of tweaked my defense a little bit. Like how, how so? Because it was like, okay. I taped it. I'm going to go back and watch it now that you're telling me this. It was like, okay, all right, I'm going to just pretty much pay attention to, to Clay Thompson. That's it. And if any time I could switch, he's not my responsibility. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's pretty much his time to get loose. Yeah, I did notice because uh, Mike was chasing Curry around. Yeah. They put you on Clay. Courtney Lee Got on started, Clay. and he yeah. was Harrison Barnes. And exactly. exactly. And then on the other side, they cross-matched, and, then and they had Barnes on you. And Barnes on me, and then exactly. It was, yeah. It was it was really posed to free up Courtney Lee so he could score. Yeah, we still sticking bars. That didn't happen as much. <laughs> that didn't happen as much. <laughs> that didn't so, happen as much. We were trying to do a good job of just me, me yep. being on whether it's Steph or, or, or Clay. When you watched it back, um, there was one time where you go. I'm, I watched it the other day, and I've never asked you about this. You so many times if there was like a call against you, you would go to the scores table and you would sit on the scores table. Because it'd be some bull. <laughs> I couldn't afford. That was your protest? I, I, couldn't that was af- your- I couldn't afford, you know, getting multiple texts. You know, I couldn't do it. It wasn't good for my image. I didn't want to lose the money. But I can say it was kind of undermining to the ref. There's one where you were, <laughs> the, the rest were huddling around the, uh, there's three refs huddled around the screen, yeah. and, you, and you walk up in there, and oh my God, Lionel rips you away from yeah, there. Yeah, he pulled so me away. <laughs> but hey, he was so mad but at hey, you. Hey, 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 you know when emotions flaring, you know, <laughs> get very passionate about the game. Hey, you trying to see what they talking about? The other thing was you were matched passion wise because Draymond goes crazy at the beginning of that game. Oh, like yeah. there's a couple of fouls. I think one takes he place hit, on he uh, hit, he Zach. Hit. He hit Mike in the face a little bit, too. He did hit Mike in the face a little bit, too. Uh, I was like, whoa. And then Zebo, you see Zebo coming in out of the uh, huddle. <laughs> hey, man, hey, man, why, watch out with that little elbow, bro. You know, that little elbow kind of hurt my little fella. You know? <laughs> 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 then, then, then Draymond Green, like, man, you know I ain't playing like that. And so The craziest one was, did that. you see any of the game six they showed, the San Antonio one? No. The first – uh, the I first playoff I, win. I think I stopped. The Battier shot, and then shot. they showed that one. But then Ooh, they showed that one. They showed Game Six at home. I think I think I started watching it when they was we were playing the Thunder. Okay, this is the Game Six. 
that took place here. The very first playoff win, the Victor, oh, yeah, uh, series win, yeah. right? That's Zebo series. I'm gonna call that the Zebo series, man. Bro, that game six, <sighs> that game six, that is like, like Jordan. I'm not like people can laugh at that. He is unstoppable. Fade They're away, throwing him fade the ball. Fade away, leaning. There's nothing they can do. Yeah, he, I, I mean, that is. You watch that back. He looks like the best player in the NBA. That one game, he is just impossible to stop. Impossible. All, he all time Grizzly for that game, for sure. I mean, he they throw it to him on the wing and he drives. Then he then the next one he Step jabs back. he jab yeah. steps. The next one he hits a three and it's like, what is happening here? I think he has like sixteen in the fourth. Yeah, he went crazy. Sixteen in the fourth quarter. They went they went Tim Duncan, Tiago split up, McDice. Well, and the craziest he thing all those guys. is to uh, Dewan Blair. They tried Blair. him. They tried Matt Bonner. They tried everything. Bonner, he threw everything but the kitchen sink on that man. And there was nothing that they could do. And the crazy thing is, if you watch that back at the end of the game, this is so great when they showed it because I haven't watched. I was at the game. I don't know if I had ever watched the TV broadcast of it except for the highlights. Yeah. Mark think- Jackson, they're showing on the screen – uh, Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, Tony Parker, and they're showing like their contracts, and he's going through this whole speech about how Father Time is undefeated, you know, and about how like it's the end, like you guys ended the Spurs, and then right. they like two years later they beat the Heat by like a thousand, yeah, in the finals, in the finals, <laughs> same guys, crazy, you know what I mean? But it was no, they had Kawhi they were, by the end though, right? Hey, Kawhi, but they man. were doing like a this is the end speech because you guys had knocked them off. It's like everything comes to an end. Because they everybody and had us, everybody had us getting beat in five. Well, you know. We were supposed to get beat in five. What was crazy is I went back and looked. You guys lost on purpose at the end of that year yeah, on to purpose. get them to get to instead of LA. Exactly. Did not want to play the Lakers. No. Nah. And that's when Mamba was the Mamba. Yeah, right. That's 11, right? That's 2011. Yeah. So they had just won the title. Yeah, Kobe. The year before. Lakers. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was lit. So <laughs> you <laughs> want to stay this with This wasn't Achilles, Kobe. This was, <laughs> <laughs> this was the, the yes. mamba. Yeah, just stay away from him yeah. the best you can. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, now that it is the summer. Summertime, summertime. Yeah. Now I finally get to do what I've been wanting to do for a long time. What is and it? What is, is it? All right. So I'm going to ask you, we are going to do, I'm going to do teammate superlatives. All right. Now you played for 11, 12, how many years? Me, uh, person? 12? 14. 14? Is that right? You came out, what, 2004? That's not. Now, you played last season. That would be 14. Well, seven, seven with the. Seven, six, one. Seven with the Celtics? I didn't realize that. Oh, is it seven? There's with no the way. Six, seven with the six, Grizzlies. Seven, six, seven, one. I didn't realize you were at the Celtics for six years. Yeah, man. Once you grab me, you got to keep me. Well, they didn't. No, I mean, damn. I think no. I think six years is probably is your your average span for a player before his ass get tossed. <laughs> what you think, Rose? You think it's six is years? It's, is four, a, it's fourteen. Yeah, six, it, seven, no, one. I'm six, six years is probably enough time for you to be like, all right. We yeah. haven't had. I, 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 think, I mean, I would say. Unless you're like Kobe or Dirk. No. And that's what I'm saying. So, yeah. No, that's what makes you guys so Or Tony so rare. Parker, you know. And even he and you, went to Charlotte. And you got the, you got the, you got the exceptions like – that's yeah. what I thought the Grizzlies was going to do to me. You got the exception like Nick Collison. Haslam. You got the Haslam. Yeah, Haslam. You know, it's somebody else that just got a job too that just ain't played and old as Dirk too. Uh, <laughs> somebody else. You know, it's funny he says that. In the Memphis time – Outside of him, Zach, Mike, and Mark, who would be the longest tenured guy? That is actually well, uh, Pow. Yeah, Pow was Pow here. was here and got a second deal. Rudy was here and got a second deal. Right, they played through their rookie deal Battier and then got, got a, a second, second deal. deal. 
Didn't he? Battier got a second deal. Yeah, I think Battier got a second deal. Yeah. Those probably. I think Mike if you Miller count the Miller got a two second deal. But if we count the and we had two stints. Yeah. With Mike Miller because they brought him back. There's not that many though that have played six years in a Grizzlies uniform. Not very many at all. I mean Conley. Conley's, probably the, Conley's the longest, right? Conley's, yeah, Conley's what? Twelve years. Twelve years. Eleven years. Twelve years. No, Mark was before him. Was Mark before Conley? Conley was, Conley was the 06 draft or 07 draft. So was he the next year? I thought Mark was one year. I thought Mark, I, I thought Mark was one year ahead of Mike. I thought he was here for one year. Am I wrong about that? Or is that backwards? Well, let's look. Was it Mike here and then it was Mark here? I thought Mike, Mark came in with, Con, uh, with uh, Lowry. Isn't that the year? Didn't he come Gasol in with Con- play, Gasol played nine and a half seasons here. Nine and a half? Oh, yeah, then I guess he was less. Conley was 12. 12 seasons. Yeah, Mike the, Mike the man. Mike All the man. right, Mike. 12 seasons. You sure. said six. 12 full We seasons. didn't get tired of him no, for I'm, 12. No, yeah, because Gasol's, yeah, Gasol's nine and a half because they traded him in the middle of the year. Huh. I don't know how I want to say this without coming off crazy. You're going to come off crazy. Lift the microphone first and then all say right, it. All right, all right, let me just say this. He come in at the rebuilding stage. You see what I'm saying? Mike. I'm sorry, ten and a half for Mark. Ten and a half. So, so it's like you win lottery. Mm-hmm. So off the rip, you get you get you get like three, four years to actually blossom yeah. your little thing. Right. You know, I don't know what year I came in his career, but Mark, Mike, Mike, four years in. Four years. He's four years in. Well, because you were 11, right? Yeah. So, right, boom. So, that's right around the time where they finna make a decision on you. Yep. He cracked at that time. We went won the playoffs. Do you think he owes you commission? No, I'm not saying that. A little that. bit? Because Maybe some, a little commission? No, sometimes it's just time in, in yeah. your career and to have what they gonna do. Now, if we don't make the playoffs, we have a season like how we had in my last year. Do Mike stay for the long run? You don't know. You never know. So it's all about just at perfect time. Winning. Winning and yes. timing. So, yeah. So big shout out to Mike for, you know, working the system and doing what he did. Yep. All and right. He's always forever to be a legend. So in honor of that uh, Grizzlies day that they just had on NBA TV and seeing all those old teams, now I get to ask you about these teammates. All right, come on. Know what you want to know so about all four, my teammates. 14 years in the league. 14 years. The three funniest teammates you had. The three funniest teammates I had. Oh man, I would have to say uh, I give I give one uh, Perk Kendrick Perkins. I get Kendrick Perk funny. Dude. He he funny man. He always he in a ha ha big fella. He real funny. You um, know I just saw a clip of him a couple of days ago saying what was it like? Uh, he said that you were responsible for. Is it Swamp Thing? Swamp Thing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> said, that, said that his nickname was Swamp Thing, and, and he mentioned that Tony Allen was responsible for his nickname. And I was like, well, I've never heard this yo, before. Yo, Swamp Thing. You know, so look, let me tell you a story, right? So my man used to always come in the um, – right before practice, he'd come in practice. He was like, yo, I got to lather up me a sweat. I got to get ready. First one in the gym to it, let's do it. I hear scream that out. Like right before he, you know what I'm saying, get it. Like go into the uh, sauna for about 40 minutes straight. 40 minutes? I mean, he'll sit in the sauna for 40 minutes straight. <laughs> like look, he'll come back out the st- and with the steam shower was running, right? <laughs> so he'll come out, man, he's sweating, drenched. he come out one day, I was like, well, this ain't your greatest in person, a swamp thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I don't know if you get it. He like swamp thing. He like, I like it. He went in that boat, dried off, went and worked out, man. Had a great practice, man. Before you know it, we was calling him swamp thing all throughout the split. <laughs> you called him swamp thing from then on? From then on, bro. 40 like, minutes in a sauna yeah, he's, is, he's that's outrageous. He's soaking them up. He, he, <laughs> just to wake him up, he said, he say, open up his pores. He ready to go. He. He be live in practice. That's one. He one person in practice. I'm talking. He looks forward to competing with the second team. Like, 
Like he he takes it personal. Like that's his game and on the game. Like, and I I, kind, I think I kind of picked that up from him too. Cause I, his intensity, well he picked it up from Ticket. I was, right. But he kind of mimicked a little bit and you know kept the drive going with the muscle of competing. You know, it's just we all tied, cut from the same cloth. All right. So Kendrick Perkins, give me two other of your funniest teammates. Funniest team. Raise that mic up. Funniest teammates. I right, um. Oh man, who was who was some funny guys on the team? Uh, I go, uh, I go. Paul Pierce. He a prankster too. All right. He a pretty much a prankster. You know, I told you a story about him putting a flex all on my tights. No. <laughs> yeah, he, he used to play around, do little trickery stuff like. What is flex all? Like you know. Like Ben Gay. Ben Gay, yeah. He put it where? On my tights. Inside? Yeah. So I come in, I'm playing around, I'm, you know, I'm like, what's up, what's up? So he just steady grinning. <laughs> I don't know why he grinning. <laughs> so I'm putting my pants on. I'm even put, you know, I got to take my drawers off, whatever, put my tights on. Right. So I'm like, man, what the hell? So funny. What the hell you laughing at, man? You all right? I'm over like, there putting my stuff on. Yeah. All of a sudden, I'm like, yo. <laughs> and it get to getting hot. Or did it get cold first? I ain't sure. Whichever one, it got cold first. Then I'm like, oh, I got in the water. It went hot. I'm like, oh. I'm like, it was cold hot. I'm like, oh, okay. That's what we on. So the next day, what happened the next day was he had these new shoes. He Like Nike customized his own shoe. Right. So he, he broke them in the first day. Boom. He can come back out of the locker room. He like, yeah, these comfortable. Yeah, I'm ready to get like 35 and these. Yeah, you like these? Yeah, these gonna sell more than Jordan. So he just talking crazy. So I'm like, okay, he like these shoes. I grab, I go to the um, buffet, our little, you know, the lounge area. So I waited till he took his shoes off. Wait till he went and got his food. I stuck like three bananas. <laughs> Open the bananas up, <laughs> stuck them all in his shoes. So when he come back to practice the next morning, he talk about these shoes, he going to feel all that gooey stuff in his, in his feet. And sure enough, that's what happened. But I had to give it to him, man, because all the pranks and stuff he played throughout my career in Boston. Did he put his feet? Yeah. And it, in he, the banana he shoes? He was like, T.A. <laughs> <laughs> he, he knew who it was. He knew who it was off the rip. See, but I, I, if I don't get you in a wash, I'm going to get you in the rinse. And so <laughs> that was part of the rinse. All right, so we got Kendrick Perkins. We've got Paul Pierce. And then um, for three, I had to go. Dang, who I can go for three? Mm. It's hard, man. It's hard. It's hard. Because, you know, I'm normally the funny guy. But uh, let's give it to uh, Glenn Baby Davis. All Celtics. All Celtics. None of, none of, <laughs> none of the great Celtics. All Celtics. <laughs> All of them. All Celtics. All right. So now – now that you mentioned the prank, is this one another one of the questions? The best prank you have seen played on someone? The best prank I've seen played. I mean, look, you've already mentioned banana shoes. Yeah, 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 flex ben off. Gay. Ben Gay, right. Uh, uh, there ain't been too many pranks. Because um, you hear about filling a guy's car up with popcorn. Yeah, you like heard these about kind that. Of things, right? You heard about that. Like, that's probably the, the norm. It's nothing been more than that. It, no. Oh, no, hold on. Hold on. I think... I think we picked somebody up and threw him in the cold tub. <laughs> we, I, I can't think of which rookie. Here? I think it was here. We picked him up, threw him in the cold tub. Did some, oh, oh, don't give me the telling no story. But that happened. I just, I just don't know if it was Boston or Memphis. We grabbed one of the rookies. They didn't want to never get in the cold tub. And you <laughs> threw him in there? Threw him in the cold tub. Oh, my goodness. He probably gets sued nowadays. No, Can't not really. do anything anymore, right? Not really. He right. wanted. He was laughing. The three that took losing the worst. The three. Or that, if you just want to say the player that took losing the worst, then you want to get if you if you have okay, multiple. Yeah. If you have multiple. No, 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 no. I got a player that hate losing for sure. The worst. The most. The worst. Marcus All. 
He lose, he get to talking in Spanish, you get to pulling out your Rosetta Stone. Like, did he say, <laughs> did he say, did he just say, call me a cabron? <laughs> Was I a cabron? <laughs> so, so, so you like, damn, Mark, I thought we were boys. I should have passed it. <laughs> I shouldn't have shot it. You see what I'm saying? So, like, and he's, he's a guy who actually, he knows the game, he watched the game. He probably don't promote watching film as much, but I know when he go home, he for sure watched the game. And he come back and tell you everything that didn't happen before coach even turn on the film. You see what I'm saying? And tell you why we lost and you know what I'm saying? And he get over it and then the next day in practice, he's serious as a heart attack. Like just not to use heart attack as an example, but right. he's serious and- um, He took losing the worst of the anyone. Worst than anybody. And I would have to say him. You know, it, it carry on the next day. It shows in his work ethic because he's going 110 percent the next day. Wow! And then he's all business on game day. Then we win, and then he hey la 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 bum You know, so so it's like that. You see what I'm saying? Yes. But I and, and all the other guys. Oh no, I didn't see him take it as much personal as he did. He just always took it personally. Yeah, like, and it, but that's show, that's why he's so great. That's why he's a champion now. That's why he's an all star. That's what he always had a mindset, and I'm gonna be at that level. And it was it took year by year with slow progress, slow progress. I mean, he was starting from high school. You know what I mean? Yep. Big pun. Then you slim down. Come on down. Come on down. Then before you know it, he's all star. Before you know it, he's a champion. He always been determined to be great. His brother set the plateau. Right. So he was just chasing that, and now he's the man. The best teammate, uh, best dress teammate you've had? Mike Conley, hands down, man. You know, Mike Conley. Sometimes, you know, he might wear, you know, some simple, some nice button up. Then next time he might come in dressed like a space cadet. <laughs> you know, it, it, but it, that's the flavor for now. You know, you could, you, could, you could step out the box a little bit, you know. I think he one of the guys who promoted me to slim down in my jeans. Yeah, because I was like 38, 36s. I slimmed them on down, 34s now, you know, fitted jeans, tight. He said, that's the, that's the wave. That was the wave. Yeah, so Tony, he, was, I, I he was, was giving you fashion tips. Yeah, and I was telling him at first, like, yo, your pants so tight I could read your credit card through your pants. <laughs> But then, as it gradually got, <laughs> as it gra listen, no, <laughs> listen, as it gradually got better, I'm like, yo, I'm gonna I'm 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 bring it down a notch in the jeans, and so that's that's what I did. And so, fashion tips, he's the best dressed guy I know. Really? Plus, he got that bag. He buying all type of stuff. It didn't design the sending it to him. Maybe you like this, Mike? No, send it back. You might wear it one time. You know he. he he, he, he in the fashion world. He really only wears stuff one time. Yeah, he in the fashion world, so, you know, that's how it go. One time he wears it. Yeah, this is my second time wearing this shirt. Tony, I actually respect Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, Let's go, man. What you want to know? T.A., right. man. All right, now here's the best one. The worst dressed teammate. The worst dressed teammate. Who had the least swag? Well, I see now, I was going to give it the mark. I could have gave it the <gasps> mark. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to tell you what. Before he signed his max deal, he wasn't giving two cares about nothing. Then he got a stylist. Boom. The two of them had the stylist. Brandon. Mark, Brandon. Yep. Yeah. And okay, boom. So after that came, I got to take Mark off of that. Got to. So now. And I know, I know, I know the Hall of Fame is going to be mad at me for this. I know the Hall of Fame. <laughs> the Hall of Fame. <laughs> But my boy Vince Card is probably the worst <gasps> dresser. I ain't going to lie. Hey, now, now, listen. I say that. Hold on. I say that with all due respect. Because, Vince, I know you probably hit it. But you my man. All I'm saying is he just didn't give me that, that look I was looking for. You know what I mean? Like. I don't know. He kind of like. Like, you know, back in the day, you know, you used to wear the bigger suits, the bigger, like, yeah. if, if fashion people know what I'm talking about. See, now you got the Pee Wee Herman looking suits now. You know what I mean? Like, no, I'm saying not him, but I'm saying that's the style that they going with. And sometimes I would see his style, like, 
be still like the old of old. So if you look at some pictures, you know, Tracy McGrady on NBA TV that day. Yeah. With the big, <laughs> with the big Nike suit. The, it was a suit, but it was made by Nike. It was made by Nike? That's a joke. Oh. But I'm just telling you. <laughs> they make the suit. So it was like, I would see Vince. Baggy. It's too baggy. Kind of baggy. Yeah, yeah, that's what I I'm, thought he was well dressed. Sometimes. But you know, it's his caliber. You know, you, you, these, this is a Hall of Famer guy, so you can't help but watch him every day. Like, yo, we gotta watch his move. How you be Hall of Fame? So sometimes you get to looking at his dressing, and then you got Mike showing out. He, so he, you asking me this question? The, my eyes can't lie. That's what I seen. You were disappointed. So it's really expectations versus, yeah. Because some of the like the young players, the rookie guys. Yeah, you know, they win. Right. They win uh, a, a graphic T-shirts and some Vans and some skinny jeans. It's some and uh, the warm ups and the warm ups. So you <laughs> right. so so you see him and you thinking like I right, finna come right. Dapper Dan and, GQ and, and, and sometimes he ain't do it. You didn't believe that that was so. No. All right. Uh, the three, or you don't even have the name. The, the guy that spent the most time grooming. Grievous Vasquez. <laughs> this man, he had like a little, little Venezuelan <laughs> persuasion going on. A, on a, <laughs> he like he would be in that thing. I'm talking about calming it, calming it. Go sit down, chill for about ten minutes, get a stretch, go work out, come back. <laughs> so probably v you think he Grievous. spent the most time on his hair. Grievous Vasquez, man. You know what? And, and he a, he the only guy I know could get hit off the pick and roll, and you know the fuzz that's the little it never moved. So I don't know if it was cement in the in the jail or what, but it never moved. Go back and look at the camera. Every time he moved, his head never moved. <laughs> I don't know what it was. You know, I saw him about you did? a month ago. You should have gave him my number, yo. I really should have. I saw him a month ago. I saw him at a party in Vegas. You should have gave him my of number. Of all though. things, I was walking through. I mean, I flipped out. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, you know what he's doing? Leaves. He is an assistant coach in the G League now. Is he? I think with the Raptors, one of those teams. Oh, yeah? Eastern Conference team, yeah. He's he's getting into coaching. Hey. I hadn't seen him in so long. He looked great. They're my boy. Oh, I love They're Grievous. My boy. I love Grievous. Yeah, it was out. Of, I talk about people I was not expecting to see. I saw him at where were we? The Palms. He was at that party. Yeah, at the we Palms. were at the party at the Palms. Some yeah. some some party that was thrown, and I ran into Grievous. I was walking to the bar, and I saw Grievous. I was like, "You've got to be kidding me!" Of all things, you want to talk about who I did not expect to see here. Grievous Vasquez. Yeah, I hadn't boy. seen him in so long. It was nice to catch up with him for sure. I was a I was a fan. Um, but he spent the most time. Yeah. Who who spent the least time? The mustiest teammate you ever had. They meant the must. Man, you gonna get me beat up in the streets, man. <laughs> you hear this wrong? No, I'm not worried about you. I think you can handle yourself. Man, I must pass that question. You're not going to tell me? Oh, I want to say that. I'm just going to go by how much they sweat. I'd say Jermichael Green. Oh, he – I mean, that no, dude No, I sweat, sweat the same way, though. He does, I too. sweat the same way, so – You were a big sweater. Might be me. You think they would say you're the mustiest? Probably so. No. I'm always sweating. So, we, who knows? Who cares? What's the next so A lot one? of the overseas guys – Oh, usually, for sure, usually, for sure, for sure. They usually catch it. For sure. Oh, oh, no, I got one. I got one. For sure I got one. In the Pelicans. Um, what's his name? What's this kid's name? Check Diablo. Check Diallo? Diallo, yeah. That my boy. But big shout out to Check. But the man smell like a stat sheet sometimes. <laughs> a what? A stat sheet. Rebounds, assists, fouls, FGAs, <laughs> charges, <laughs> out of bound dives. <laughs> I just made that one up too. Oh man, I didn't mean to do that. I don't that. even oh, know man. what that means. He smelled like he did a lot of work today, man. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> uh, no man, no. But no, that, that <laughs> only only got the shoot arounds though. The man had to shoot around and just go home. It was funny, but he stunk. 
He was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> the one teammate you just never saw eye to eye with. One teammate I never saw eye to eye with. Oh man, I can't. I don't. But see, this the thing. I, I would if I tell you his name, I would love to explain how he came, how it came back around. Okay. You know what I mean? And uh, I wouldn't say we didn't see eye to eye, but at first, you know, I don't think he wanted to buy into how, you know, the initiation as a rookie, the, the you know, the just the camaraderie it takes, and just and just understanding you a rookie, enjoy being a rookie. I think Wade Baldwin was one of those guys who was, you know, hyped up or not even hyped up, just had this this aura about itself that, you know, I belong and I, you know, and, you know, being in the NBA. I'm better than these guys already. Yeah, and being in the NBA is, is, is really, it's, 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 a, it's a privilege. It's not a right. You know what I mean? So just because you was juiced up at Vanderbilt and you did this and you played against whatever, whatever, when you get here, it's a whole different fraternity now. You know, and your veteran guys, you must pay homage to, you must show homage to, you know, and enjoy being a rookie. Don't always feel as if you know everything, you know what I mean? And then it was times, you know, I would try to feed them advice like, yo, man, you need to go in here and get some extra shots up. You need to you worried about not playing. Right? You might need to change your attitude. He was one of them, I don't need to do nothing. I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm way balling. I know how to, you know, he had that type of approach. And before you knew it, he was, he was only two years into his deal, gone. And he was gone. And then, you know, when when that happened, you know, it's 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 more so about you because it's not about your talent. He doesn't have a team now. Let me finish what I'm saying. It's not about your talent. It's about how you carrying yourself, and you carrying yourself as if you arrived and you belong when you ain't really scratched surface on this hardwood. So it was a lot of just behind the scenes stuff he was doing and just putting on his headphones, not talking to people. It's time to tell him something. He ain't taking it in. And, you know, when he left, I got a phone call from him. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of the stuff that I was saying and a lot of stuff that I was trying to instill in him, as far as work ethic and, you know, habits and how you carry yourself and the way you move and just being nice, he, he called me back and was like, yo, you was right on a lot of shit you were saying. I mean, a lot of stuff you were saying. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, man, I really respect you for that. So me and him was able to, Mash it back up, and he was just like, man, I was young. I wish I would have been listening. You know what I'm saying? A lot of things would have probably been different. And just what I was, the game I was giving him, he took it in. He took it in, and we was able to. We keep in touch to this day. I hope it works out for him because he, yeah, because he, he just wasn't it, it mature. Was, it, it wasn't. It, it wasn't. I mean? It had nothing to do with his game. It's nothing to do with his. I game. almost think it would have turned out different if he would have gone elsewhere rather than Memphis, being so close to Nashville. And he friends, family, friends, family. Well, just and, get away. And you and you completely. You, you, you and, sitting in here wondering why you not playing? Right. And you just left Vanderbilt because everybody's school. coming up to hang out. They want to know what's up. He's like he one of these guys like you know that was running with him, convinced him to do like a documentary about himself, and it's like come on, man, like slow all that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but I that's think, one guy. And then, and, and yeah, yeah. But then, as time passed, you ended up hearing back from him and saying, "Hey, I wish I yep. would have listened. I wish I would have listened to you then." All right, three guys that if they are going out after the game, you absolutely know it's going to be fun. <laughs> oh man, uh, let's say uh, Chelly Parson. <laughs> For sure. For sure. For sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, first name on the list, huh? Yeah. Uh, Guaranteed fun. For sure. Everybody Whoa. always wonder why I like him so much. He, he is he is a charming guy. He is fun. He's back fun. In the day, He's back, fun. Look, back in the day, Ricky Davis. Ricky Davis? Yeah, he was lit. And then um, one more person. That's about it. Ricky Davis and Chandler Parsons. You know, if right you're right. going, like, if they say, hey, let's go out, you know you're about to have fun. It's lit. Y'all didn't <laughs> get to play together, but I bet you Joe Kim Noah's like that, too. 
Yeah, Joe used to be. He, yeah, used to be. You know, Joe Kim was he, like that yeah, in Chicago yeah, yeah. and New York, man. I think he's cooled out now. Yeah, a lot of a lot, and I'm pretty sure a lot of those guys cooled out now. Yeah, but I'm just saying at the time that's what it was. Yeah, the best video gamer. What you mean? That you ever played with? On far as video game? Yes. Marcus O. What? Yeah, that man play uh, FIFA. FIFA. That's so hard to play. I picked up the controller one time. I'm like. I had no idea Mark played video games. FIFA. He plays FIFA. That makes sense. Big, yeah, but I big never, soccer guy. Big soccer guy. I never heard him talk about video games in over a decade. Yeah, I might have said too much. I probably shouldn't have told you that now. What? That he plays video yeah, games? Yeah, man. So might, what? Might take away from his uh, big fella. No. Big I like. I liked it. I tell you this. You know who was awesome at video games? I don't know if you'll ever remember this. I, play, I did a video with Zach. 10 years ago where we played like uh, 2K or whatever for some promotion. But you know who was in there at the time? Do you remember Marcus Williams? Was he here when you were here? Who was that? Marcus Williams. Played point guard. He might have been. He, yep. Oh, UConn. Oh, the UConn. Yeah, he yeah. might have been That's the year. That's my boy. He might have been the year before you, though. Yeah, Marcus. Was he on the same team with you? Nah. The year before. He no, was actually, on the team with Zach. No, actually. He was awesome at 2K. Because he was in there when we were in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But yeah. I, maybe that was Zach's first year here. Might have been. I don't know. I did some video with Zach for 2K. But yeah, Marcus was Williams was on the team. 2010. You're right. Marcus Williams was on that team. So you were the next year. I was 10 and 11. Uh, okay. Or, so you were never on the same team with Marcus? No. But you know him. I know him, though. You know, yeah. I'd be seeing him around. You know. All right. Uh, let's see. Three meals when you were out on the road, like when you were on the, you know, when you guys were on road trips. Three meals that you absolutely ate when you went to different cities. Ooh. Who had the best salmon and mashed potatoes? <laughs> no, they're, they're. Ocean Prime. Where's that? You could just Google. It's a big time steakhouse. Oh, you went there whenever they had them. For sure. Ocean Prime, Tao, Mr. Chow. Uh, Philippe Chow. Dog Chow. Uh, Pram 112, you go to Miami. You always go there. Like, it's just spots you just, you know for sure you got to get, like, you're going to get the, the best of the city experience and yep. ambiance for your for your meal. You for sure go. Where's Mr. Chow, L.A.? Yep, in Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills. Where is Ocean Prime, Roser? Ocean Prime, right in Beverly Hills too. It's all over. Like they got a, they got a bunch of them. I think so. I don't. Think I know. I went to one. Yeah, in Yeah, there are a bunch of them. There's one in Tampa. I mean, they Denver. Yeah, Denver, Chicago, Chicago Tampa. Tampa yeah. They got a bunch of them. The Felipe Chow is in New York. I'm looking at their menu. Yeah. Did you get the tofu? Nah, I ain't get the <laughs> tofu, but I definitely got the uh, what you call it? Uh, the, what's it called? The, is it the lobster wontons? <laughs> lobster wontons. That sounds amazing. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm thinking of towel. I'm, I'm sorry. That's towel. That's towel. Lobster wontons. That's a towel. But uh, at that specific restaurant, I get the the uh, walnut shrimps. Um, Honey walnut. Chicken screwer. Chicken skewer. And, um, yeah, you get three of them. Yeah, it's a whole lot of stuff on there. I get. Yeah. You know, and, and, and really when I go, you know, it's like like one of the best ambiance you can, you can imagine. Like, Dude, the lobster you get is like five and a half pounds. Look, you come through the door, right? <laughs> How much is it? Is Those, it market they, price? They don't have prices look, you on come here. Through the door, right? You come <laughs> through the door, right? And boom, they take you downstairs. Through the kitchen, like in the you ever saw the movie Goodfellas, mm -hmm. where they look like they yeah, don't got yeah, a, yeah. they don't got a table at first, and then they make a table for you. They give you they give me that type of treatment. So you come with me, and we in New York. Ocean Prime. No, Philippe Chat. Oh, Philippe Chat. And we gon' <laughs> hey, and we gon' we I'm gonna set it out for you. We're going. We're going. Set it up, bro. They do have they do have a private dining thing in here. I'm hey, sure that's probably hey, what they do. You know do what? For you. I'll get them to send. Hey, I'll get them to send us, and we'll go with the video crew. When do we play the Knicks? I'm dead ass serious. Man, that out. Hey, we're gonna, we gonna be lit. When do we play the? Let next it be here? a I'll Tuesday. Pull up the schedule. 
We'll do a video. And we'll, but I, wa- I wonder if they'll let cameras in Philippe Chow. Probably yeah, will. They won't let them in, man. Yeah, they're going to let it. My folks over there, I got a, one of my, my Greek boy over there. He's my man. When do we go to New York? New York. When do we New play York. at New York? Not October. Hey, we can holler at Fisdale. <laughs> yeah, you can invite him. <laughs> you want to do that? Yeah, man. Tell him to come down there. Take that for us. data. It's a Wednesday, January 29th. Oh, uh, we did. Wednesday, January 29th. I think we can pull that off. Is it part of a long road trip or a one-off? We've got a home game the night before. Perfect. Oh, yes, sir. Pop got a home plane. Game, got a home game against Denver the night before. And then do we come back after New York? Uh, no, I'm actually planning on being at the next road game because it's Friday night in New Orleans. I'm planning on being at that one. And then we could drive back. And then the sun, and then Sunday is the Super Bowl. You still got hookups in New Orleans? You weren't there long enough. Yeah, I, I got my boys over there. Yeah, you do? My boys. Okay, well, they, 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 certainly we could call Sip, and he could get us hooked up somewhere in New Orleans. Now, my boy David Booth. My boy David Booth. What's he got? He going to hook us up when we come to New Orleans. Where is that? Where, what does he have? What you mean? Is it is the name of the restaurant? No, David Booth is actually a guy. <laughs> okay, what restaurant? And he, he, uh, he just pretty much... Points me in the directions and where I need to go when I'm in New Orleans. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know that he's just a guy. Uh, no, no, he's he actually works for the Pelicans. Oh, he does. Yeah, he works for the Pelicans. Okay, and he's a, he's the food guy that we go to. The best car you have ever seen a teammate have. A teammate. Okay, the best car I've never seen a teammate have was the Tesla. Me seeing the Tesla for the first time. Like me seeing the Tesla. No, Mike I'm, and no, Mark I'm gonna take, take that back. I'm gonna take that back. Nah, I just Skip Zebo. All that. Skip all that. They installed chargers. Listen. For Teslas because listen, of Mike and Mark. Listen. The the old school. Actually, I gotta name all my teammates. First thing first, Zebo's old school collection. Oh. Is phenomenal. It's maybe like six hundred thousand dollars in old school. It's it's crazy. Like he actually loved building cars and making them look exotic. That's just, that's one of his things he loved doing. That was impressive. Me seeing that, I'm like, yo, you got down there a two hundred thousand dollar old school car, and here it is. I'm in my hundred and ten thousand dollar Benz, and you your car costs more than mine. <laughs> it's kind of odd. I didn't understand it. It was it took me by surprise because I'm not into that. I ain't into like the fancy old school cars. Dude, like. the year that we had him and Vince. So listen. Listen, so now they come right after after that, after that was a surprise, I saw the Teslas. I never saw the Teslas. I said, who was this coming in with this big old Ford Focus? All the time, <laughs> it was a Tesla. He had to correct me, man. It's almost a $200,000 car, man. It don't take no gas. Took me by surprise, man. I took like 100 pictures, took about 200 selfies, recorded it. I was impressed. I didn't believe it. And I was wondering why they had the gas can in the back. He said, that's not gas, that's electricity. So it took me by surprise. Dude, Conley had one that was, I, 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 I asked him, I took a picture of it. It, was, it is a car I have never heard of in my life. It was like a legitimate tank. Oh, like yeah. for real, like a tank. Yeah. Like an army tank. <laughs> I was like, yeah. what, what is this? I've never even heard of this car. I went and looked it up. And I can't even remember what the name of it is anymore. And then I, I like Ticket. I like Ticket when he first came to the to the Celtics. He had a Maybach 57S. Maybach 57S. Yeah. Maybach I, music. So look. May, m- m- so look. M- m- I remember. M- m- and music. I remember one day him locking him locking the keys in the car. Or something. And I was like, what's what's why is he going crazy outside? He's going crazy. Ah oh, ah, oh, love my key, y'all. Oh. He lost it. It he lost crazy. it. He lost it. And I, I looked at the car. I was like, I see why he lost it. All right, so the best one that you the, – the, the one that if you could have the car from the guy. You've seen a lot of Phantoms. Yeah, you've it. seen a lot of Roll. You've seen a lot of right. Bentleys. Guys have had all manner of cars. But if I could take a car, if I could just yeah, – If I could say, like, yo, son, let me just have it and I don't owe you nothing. Please let me get it. Yes. It will be Zeebo's old schools. I, I think I need like two of them, the black one and the blue one. <laughs> yeah, let me get two of those, bro. <laughs> you don't need it. I'm going to see if I can find this Conley car so I can tell you what the name of it is because it's the damnedest thing. He's in Salt Lake City now anyway. What does it matter? Mm. He's got the it, – it was the craziest car I've ever seen. The best thing you have ever gotten for free. 
For free? Yeah, from being an NBA player. I always go back to the Paul Pierce watch. I wasn't expecting nobody to give me a watch. But what if, well, all right, not a teammate. I'm talking like at a place of business. Oh, at a place like, of business. Like, you know, I know you've got well, you meals. Know Chris, and I know man, you, yeah, well, I said, I ain't really, I'm grit and grind. Ain't too much I'm looking for on the free side, no way. You know, I go get it. Like, if you give it to me, love. But if you ain't, like, I'm going to go get it, period. But I, I, so I can't answer that. Nobody ever gave me nothing free. I don't believe you. No, seriously. Really? I, I can't recall. All right. I'm going to uh, – the teammate that got yelled at the most by a coach. Teammate that got yelled at the most by a coach. I don't think none of them got yelled at more as me. <laughs> and all, I'm talking about with, all, on, with all three teams. Stop. For real. like I There was, are people uh, that got yelled at more than you. No, you know what? I ain't going to lie. Marcus Banks. Marcus Banks? Marcus Banks. Why? Want to hear a funny story? Want to hear yes. a funny story? Yes. All right, let me give y'all a funny story. Listen up, Rose. Yo, so one day, right, I don't know. Doc Rivers was so hot, yo. He was so upset. Like, I don't know. I guess the game was. It was we needed to win a couple games that we had been losing, whatever the case may be. But Doc came in that series. He came in there like, yo, at 35, everybody be dressed and ready, ready to go, right? So Marcus Banks in there on the other hand, he just got finished working out. He did his workout. You go get your shots up, come back in, chill, read a book, ice stem, do whatever you're gonna do, right? Mm -hmm. Mind you, it's getting late on the clock. You see the clock running as you walk through the things. Uh, through the uh, locker room. So imagine Marcus Banks sitting back like this on his chair real low. You get to adjust the chairs real low. Well, you can sit up real high, right? He's sitting real low on the phone talking. I'm looking at the clock. It's like 36, 19. We got to be, well, as soon as the clock say 35, be off your phone. Marcus was thinking 35 even. Doc walk in 35, 56. Marcus ain't seen him. <laughs> Doc say, man, if you don't get your ass out that phone. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what Marcus busts out and say? All right, mom, I'm going to call you back, mom. I said, wait a minute, you know damn well that ain't your mama, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, what is you doing? So he threw the phone down real fast. He stopped and said, if I catch you on this phone again, woo, woo, woo. Man, I'm talking about I couldn't believe it. The comeback of Marcus, though, was, was, was dope. That's like, clutch. Like, no, that's clutch. Oh, man, it was funny. You, do, you, you don't believe that he was talking to his mother? I do not believe he was talking to him. Because that whole week, that whole week, he just had been hard on him. Like, what is you doing? What is, pass the ball. Why you keep, like, he was running one five pick and roll. Anytime he got the ball, he would run the offense. And then if it, don't, if it ain't nothing, he won five pick and roll. Like, he was just going to it off, off the rip. Like, one five pick and roll. He was a backup point guard. Right. And just Doc just wasn't giving him no room. So it kind of like got me out the clear a little bit, you know what I mean? You see, but you every coach got a whooping boy. I don't care what you say. Like every coach got a guy that they gonna pull it with, and they gonna be so hard on. And that was him. And it was him. Poor Marcus. Oh, man. Were you buddies with him? We was cool. I mean, You're I wouldn't fine. say we were buddy buddies, but you know, I respected him. He respected me. Gotcha. All right, now Roser, I'm gonna ask you, and you've got to tell me whether or not. Tony Allen tweeted the following, okay? All right. Something told me to say no to the lady offering a new fragrance at this boutique. Oh, for sure. Now I'm happens. smelling like a granddad. <laughs> yeah, for sure, I tweeted that. Yeah, that sounds like something Tony would tweet. Because, see, let me tell you why that happened. Because there's no way you would think of that. No, no, listen, listen, <laughs> listen, listen. So, I remember that day vividly. Look, I... Like, you know how you be in the mall? And they be like, hey, spray fresh, try this fragrance. Hey. So you don't want to be like, hey, get the hell out of it. You don't want to say that. Right. So you indulge in a conversation. Hey, how you doing? Okay, yeah, it's a nice fragrance. What does it smell like? Yeah, you should try it. Let me try it. I... Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm missing aftershave. All I'm missing is the aftershave. And just all of just. 
you know, the old man stuff that you smell like when you when you just get old or whatever. And at the time, I thought I was young, cool water, fresh cologne smell. You know, I thought I was ready for that type of smell. This kind of had the old spice vibe to it. You see what I'm saying? And uh, I was highly disappointed. Roser, trust gets you killed, love gets you hurt, and being real gets you hated. No. He did. <laughs> oh, wow. I said that. <laughs> Somebody might made me mad. Somebody might made me real mad. And they couldn't take it. Lionel? <laughs> Yo, what they call that when you go to the nail shop to get your feet done? Yeah, you did tweet that. I didn't know. The pedicure. <laughs> I know now because I'm getting my dogs chopped every time I get. <laughs> you do? Oh, I love the massage, especially on the calf muscle. Which right there where I got it torn them in one year. They get to the pushing that thing. I'm like, there you go. <laughs> all right, these are all his. These are all his. I had, to, I had to find some of these old ones because he won't tweet anymore. Yeah, I won't yeah. tweet so anymore. I to, No, I, finished, I told him I'm about to start. Like, I'm about to start when, like, you said that six months ago. And that was, I told you, like, close towards the season. Like, October, like, I'm going to get back critiquing the games, get the back to talking about the games, about what I see, what I, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to give them my input. Shout out to the guy at Cracker Barrel who keep calling me LeBron. Paint your face, dude. I remember like, that. really? That's so not what's up. I remember that. Yeah, man, be coming up. What's up, man? LeBron Chang. <laughs> <laughs> man, if you don't get choked, man, get away from me and quit saying that, bro. That's irritating. They end up firing him, I think. <laughs> <laughs> He called you LeBron every time he went into Cracker Barrel. You like, you loved Cracker Barrel for man, a minute. I ain't gonna lie, I was new to the city, man. I wasn't seeing none of this stuff. Cracker Barrel, like I ain't gonna lie, I was like even half shell, like I was, I was just taking to it, like taking it to an extreme to where what I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna eat here, I'm gonna eat here. You loved Cracker Barrel though, and I at one point I loved half shell too. Yeah, you were rough on them a couple weeks ago. Yeah, you were. You said it's when you <laughs> where you go to eat when. There's no place else to eat. Yeah, that's just like the ultimate. <laughs> All right, come on. Sorry, kids. It's a lockout. No candy. Got a chicken and beef ramen noodles. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny. I thought that was funny, man. I was trying to say, I right, the lockout, you know. Uh, but hey, it, 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 it was it was a funny little thing though, because I actually did give a kid some ramen noodles. For Ice flow, then spoon flow. Yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, that was that was that was a little over y'all head right there. <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> we still ice we, flow, then spoon flow. Yeah, that was. That right. was a little and extra. here's the and this is why we need you back. I am imploring you to come back to Twitter because of this. The choppy, the choppy sentences and the emojis yeah. are just, it takes it so over the top. Here's a story. All right, Rosie, you ready for this story? <laughs> the best was I couldn't go back. You know, back in the day when you posted, like, Twitter pictures, like, you know, they would just show up, and, and now there's, like, broken links. But the best was you got in a, a car wreck with some old lady, and then you posted, oh. you said, and she's, she brought her goons. <laughs> so, yo, 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 let's relive that story. <laughs> let's relive that story. That's not that, that's not the one I was going to bring okay, up, go but go ahead. ahead. No, no, the wreck. You want to hear about that? Yes. All right, so look. She wouldn't take your insurance? So, mind you, she hit me. She hit me. So, I pull over. I'm like, all right. So then she like, I get out, I'm like, ma'am, you got license and insurance, you know, I gotta hurry up and take my daughter to school. I'll just get up with you later, here's my card. She was like, roll down the window a little bit more, I was like, no, I'm gonna wait till the police get here. <laughs> I said, Bird, I said, I said, I'm thinking by that time she know who I am or what, not, but that didn't happen. <laughs> so I went back to the car, I'm like, yo, you serious? Cool. 
five, ten minutes roll past, a cop full of women pull up. <laughs> uh, older women, about <laughs> ranging from age 67 to about 75 years old. I'm not even sure. Don't give me the line. But it was three of them. By the time I look back up and I'm like, she waited on the police or did she call her goons? <laughs> or did she need some aid and assistance and thinking I was going to be violent or just try to do the race on this situation? That didn't happen. Before you know it, five minutes, ten minutes go past. They all chilling. They all chilling. Police come. Police come. Tony, what are you doing? Hey, y'all, okay, yeah, yeah. Go on ahead, get out of here. We'll take care of the rest. One of them type of situations. She brought her goons though. Yes, and that was so funny. I had the pictures. You saw me take the picture. Yep. You see? Picture's gone now. Yeah, but of look, the three old ladies. But look, you see, I was in front. I had to take the picture of the review. <laughs> see what I'm saying? To let it be known, like, I don't know what's up. This is why we need it back. All right, Roser, we'll end with this one. This is the all timer. I'll never get in a jacuzzi at a day spa again. Dude just jumped in butt naked. I had to get out of Dodge. The F is wrong with Buddy. I'm calling the police. I thought you were supposed to at least have on swimming trunks. See, I wouldn't have ran into this problem if I, did, I didn't have to go get a couple's massage. Frowny face, frowny face. Yo. 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 Yo, yo, son. son. <laughs> that was my first time taking advantage of that. You know, and then you know they tell you to, you know, you split off. Boom, you split off. You go this side, you go this side. Man, I walk in there, man. It's my first time ever going to like a like a day spa spot. Like, you know, I always get the spot, the, the massage, right. the massage therapist come to the house, massage me, be that. Man, I walked up in here, man. It's people walking naked and it ain't, and they got everything hanging out. I'm like, yeah, okay, all right, I'll let that slide. I'll let that slide. All right, you ain't gonna put on no robe, you going to the bed, whatever. All right, cool, I'm gonna let that slide. Meanwhile, I got my towel wrapped around my waist. I'm keeping it, you know, conservative. I'm moving, okay. I get in there, got my little trunks on, I'm chilling in the jacuzzi. Man, all of a sudden, one of them dudes I saw swinging, walked dead in there, was like, what's up, howdy there, partner? I'm like, wait a minute, howdy there, partner. Wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. You ain't gonna put on no drawers. You ain't gonna put on no socks, a tank top at least. Man, it blew me. That was the first day. What year that was? 2015. Yep, my first time. I'll never forget that day, Kim. I'll never get in the jacuzzi at a day spa again. Dude just jumped in butt naked. I had to get out of Dodge. The F wrong with Buddy. Oh, really? I'm calling the police. Oh, I thought you? you was supposed to at least have on swimming trunks. For real, man. That man was tripping. <laughs> he got in the jacuzzi with you butt naked. I don't know what he was thinking. <laughs> I don't know what he was thinking. But then again, as I, as I, you know. Did you say anything? No, nah, he was you trying to have out. a conversation. He was like, yeah, it's pretty hot in here. I was like, yeah, <laughs> I know. You come in here, the asshole naked. <laughs> I, I could tell. I'm finna get out of here, man. For real. But it was one of those situations, man. You know, you live and you like. But it's all good, man. No more couples massages. No, whatsoever. <laughs> you never done one again? No, I mean, not where I got to branch off and go to the other other side. No. It's too much. Too much. Tony, it's always a pleasure. For sure. First thing, man. Like uh, we are going to have... Uh, Tomorrow, we'll have some of the guys in. The Odds Couple is going to premiere tomorrow with Rob Fisher and Lang Whitaker. So we will holler at those guys. And uh, we'll start getting ready for what is the first college football weekend of the year. I uh, want to remind you, shows always brought to you by Direct Auto and Life Insurance. And if you want to save a ton of money on your auto and life insurance, get with Direct. You can find them online at directgeneral.com, directgeneral.com. Or you can call them today and get a free quote, 1-877-GO-DIRECT. Also, if you need to sell a house in Memphis, if you know you're going to need to in the near future, if you've had a sign in your yard a long time, or you're going to be looking to move, the best real estate agent in Memphis is Jennifer Karstensen. She's a REMAX real estate expert. Find her online. Special link for our listeners, livelovegrizz.com, livelovegrizz.com. Jennifer Karstensen and her REMAX real estate experts can get you handled with whatever your real estate needs are, livelovegrizz.com. Thanks, Tony. 
Thanks to John Roser across the glass. Kimball back in our studio. Until tomorrow, we go. You gotta get there sometime, but I go. Yeah. Yeah, full-growing man.